Is that oh ding? Shoutouts to what is it Blitz I'm using their channel? They actually captured the state of play when it was live in 4K, and they just went ahead and cut that up so we can actually get a 4K trailer instead of what they for some reason continue to do, <laughs> especially with the Japanese companies. They keep uploading Capcom, all of them. They keep uploading their stuff in 1080p only. Now there is like a premium bitrate version of 1080p, but you need to be on like YouTube premium or whatever to get that. I'm like, you could just as easily just upload the video in 4k, let the encoding do its process. And then we could just, you know, choose our own settings, but <laughs> they just, they, they have not yet understood that YouTube functions in 4k now. We got it. Well, he is. <laughs> okay. He slumped out. I wonder what time period that, that's in. Oh, that looks like uh, when they were at um, Junon, right? Oh, it is. <laughs> His voice is like, what? what is happening? That combat looks fun. Mind you, I've, I still haven't played it. Uh, remake. Oh. That's that flashback. <laughs> Kate! I said the Sith, the Sith that is Kate. Or Cat, who knows? Dead but Ooh, the, the choke a flying chocobo. Man, what is it? <laughs> That's very creepy. <laughs> Yo, it's that big snurpent. Oh, that beat. You can throw people? <laughs> oh, they fight together. Oh, I remember that fight. That was also a flashback. They're doing things together, though. It's an interesting take. Uh oh. Summons. Is that oh ding <laughs> the gold saucer? Man <laughs> That's so cool. Entertainment City. Those are the mini games. Saucer Brawler. No. <laughs> A weapon? What is this timeline? Vincent! Was that the, the Maelstrom from the Calamity? Oh, snap. On two discs. <laughs> What was the original one? Four or three? I can't remember. It's, it's been so long. Hold up. Let me let me go. Let me take that back. Isn't that like a weird cut? Because right here, the sky has fallen. So. Oh man, I have so many questions because I haven't touched the remake. So this is the plate that uh, falls on Sector 7, right? But what is Zack doing here? And why is he slumped? Oh my god. They like completely changed the game, didn't they? Our Shinra. 
so wait a minute so that's another thing um back in the the original right a cutscene is cool so back in the original one i don't think they fire do they i think they just have the procession i think they fire on the weapon that's such a cool that that right there is a is a thumbnail <laughs> you forgot to clean that up later that's a cool thumbnail this right here is something special but wasn't he in they're honing in like you're leading the procession but i very much remember when you were doing this back in the day when i was doing it like i was somewhere in the back falling in line trying to keep up that's an interesting take all right i'm, I'm doing a lot of chopping now because i'm trying to figure out where we are oh man it's been a minute <laughs> i can remember playing I played this on uh, the PlayStation, of course, and I played it on PC like years later. Oh, this is uh, Cosmo Canyon. Dude, the scale looks amazing. Oh, and there's uh, the, te the uh, telescope. We can overcome our fate. Dude, look at look at that fidelity. <laughs> I hope what they do, they didn't say it in the trailer. I hope they actually define for the player base how to actually pronounce this character's name. And it took me a while in the original one to figure out because I for a minute, I don't know, maybe I thought it was backwards. I, I wasn't quite sure who the character was, right? Because it's this cat creature and then i don't know what the the other one is but like the the white body the big white body on there right so it took me a while later to figure out that this this dude right here paying attention was like the star of that show dude what is this combo first of all like this background is amazing I wonder how they're doing that. I wonder if. I wonder how much you can move. Oh, I guess I can see it. So it's just in the background. And then this area with the sand up here is the like battle environment. Okay. Oh, I love that. That nugget. So I won't spoil that, but. Uh, C Sith is talking about the call of this whole game, like the rebirth, like the reunion that's taking place uh, with the figures that you see in uh, those cloaks or the robes. And he's he's picking up on on something that that cloud is laying down. It's so awesome. This uh, this is the dune buggy, right? That you run around in when you uh get messed up in the gold saucer i don't know how much of it is like when you talk about it now is spoiler how much is it? i guess it doesn't matter because this game has like a different approach to the story but yeah this is how you traverse the the desert soldier <laughs> Chat, would you trust this man oh he, he has the voice going on like uh domon kashu from uh mobile fighter g gundam 
do you know this man like that's the vibe he's giving off no hell no <laughs> Like, the visual fidelity on this. That is sick. They know how to make their creatures, okay? That is superb. <laughs> I'm so glad that they're, they're hitting on all of, like, the, just the, the awesome points in the game or the things that like we would go back to school the next day like at the cafeteria and talk about like hey have you played through x y and z and all that like that's so cool this tag team stuff was this in the first one i gotta figure this out that's crazy <laughs> That's so cool. That's Alexander, right? Some of the names are starting to come back to me. Dude, this gold saucer scene is awesome. <laughs> Look at them. Them <laughs> like a cloud. That's perfect. That is also a trailer. I mean, that's a uh, a screenshot right there. <laughs> He's just chilling in the back. I love that they're making it so like event focused at the gold saucer and the mini game. I remember staying in the gold saucer. I can't remember if it was like before the end of, I think it was like disc one. I'm trying to remember if it was, I think that was the case because you, like back in the day you could, if you earned enough points in the gold saucer, you could acquire the uh, Omni Slash, right? I worked and worked and worked in the Gold Saucer until I got Omni Slash before loading the next disc. That is how bad I wanted it. <laughs> Do I put it in grind like that now? Hell no. No, thank you. I love this scene. Dude, that's so cool. And she's she's in the live stream. So the reason I'm I'm highlighting that is because that happens later, right? There's a situation in which like they fall in. Maybe Maybe they're tying stuff together because when they fall into the live stream, Cloud does not come out the same. In fact, he's more likely to look like this. So I, I'm so curious. They are be, they're being masterminds right now about kind of rewriting the story, though they're getting to the guess the same end i don't know like what what is the goal right that's the the number one question keeping things in context and asking yourself what's the goal because in the original one the plate falls and all this kind of stuff zach is only a character that is in retrospect right like you that character isn't in the current events but for rebirth and, and i suppose a remake he is but here's the broken plate and he's out and i don't necessarily know why but if you let's see if we scrub back up to this point where is she yeah we are she's tifa's hanging out in what to me appears to be the live stream and there's a weapon that is also coming out of the live stream and then the timing of everything so 
that's interesting we've got the sith we've got barrett tifa um Aerith and a Yuffie. Hmm. So they went to Wu Tai, right? You had to. I'm curious now. And see this this scene right here. He's talking about a reunion, but doesn't this doesn't this whole scene look like when this is like post the tragedy you know what i'm talking about like when the sky changes and everything oh man so much of this story is like different all right like now i held off because i don't have a ps5 and got it on pc however <laughs> they, <laughs> they're they're really pressing for the exclusives the fact that it's even on two discs is hilarious like, and you have to get it that way, right? Like, you can't, you can't go the route of trying to just get the digital version. Like, you must do it proper and get the discs if you're going to mess with the PlayStation version. <laughs> but February 29, man. That is not so far away at all. That is right around the corner. Like, it was just the other day I was speaking with uh, uh, Larisha, speaking with my wife, and remarking on how we're already on the back end like we're in the middle uh or towards the the back half of september already that's crazy i played the original final fantasy 7 in high school back in the late 90s and like there was so much content i, I watched my younger brother play it I watched my best friend play it. I watched him go through like the process of defeating all of the weapons at the end of the game. You know, when you have to do the whole uh, setup and like copy the Knights of the Round over and over and over and over again so that you wouldn't get bodied. Like that whole set thing. Now, here's what happened. <laughs> so I played and got to. I was somewhere on like the the back end of the second disc right and i had not yet saved <laughs> you can see where this is going i was playing during it started storming outside i i vividly remember this right this is back in the day when we had memory cards okay forget your ssd y'all are mad because they're asking you to get an ssd because your hd is too slow we had memory cards and it was pages at that i think i had this was the one i had from mad cats so i had multiple pages so that i would have more than just the 15 slots that were standard on memory cards at the time and i remember it started storming outside and i was knee deep in battle i was actually outside of uh I want to say I had trekked back to the mountain area in Nibelheim or just outside of Nibelheim. And the lightning struck and the console died. You have no idea the, the level of hurt. <laughs> so I turned it back on. Not only did it not save, but the mad cat's memory card was now corrupted okay so not only is the final fantasy 7 game my gameplay gone not my brother's okay his different memory card <laughs> my gameplay is gone for final fantasy 7 but my triple play what was it was i playing triple play 98 or 99 anyway i was i was 
doing that season and that save file was gone now that one was even more egregious because if you know you know back in the day that that one baseball game took up 14 of your 15 save slots okay ridiculous if you if you created a character if you created a, a baseball player and you played the season mode it took 14 out of your 15 slots so this is why the mad cats uh memory card is happening because i needed more and then it got corrupted so after that point i just calmly watched them play and then i did not actually touch that game again until the mid 2000s i believe on my gateway laptop and enabled the cheats and went to work <laughs> and got myself all the way back to where i could get on the third disc and then actually finish the story and finish that like the game out i think the only thing that i did not do was run around and do the challenges with the weapons at the end but i fulfilled the quest of finally beating final fantasy 7 so i mean what that took me you know almost a decade to finish because the memory card died so en enjoy in uh in vmes and, and all of the modern technology and cloud saves and all that stuff <laughs> anyway that's that's my old man rant on final fantasy 7 and memory cards all right so there's a developer interview revealing details after the state of play so let's let's actually check this out oh man this is gorgeous can you op can we open this image in a new tab can i just see this full that is that is gorgeous now it has like way more color to it than what you might see on stream but that is because I do not have the HDR set up. Um, well, it's not turned on, but it's this right here is a thumbnail. It is cover art. It's everything. That's so cool. All right, let's hop back over. Summons, gold saucer, mini games, side quests, and more discussed. In an exclusive Q and A, of course it's exclusive. Gillian McAllister. Today's state of play included bringing a look at Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The trailer surely will delight both long-term Seven fans as well as players eager to know what happens after the conclusion of Seven Remake. This cloud and company embark on a journey that takes them to the world outside of Midgard. In the trailer, we caught glimpses of new party members, a sprawling open area to explore, and a reimagining of some iconic moments from the original game. Yes, all of that was very much present. Even this right here harkens so much to the, what was it, the Advent Children movie? If you're new to Final Fantasy VII, I, I'm quite sure if you're an, an OG with it, you've seen the film. I highly implore you to go check out that movie. Um, just to give you uh, context on like how they are being designed now because it's it's really based off of that film kind of doesn't work with the way that they're retelling the story now but it should help I don't know in case you just I don't think it'll spoil anything either because again it's not necessarily the same tie-in but you'll see some characters you probably haven't seen yet so Maybe, maybe not do that. It says, rather than leave you speculating, key staff on the game joined us uh, to share not only more insight into the trailer, but also additional gameplay details. That roundtable includes Seven Rebirth producer uh, Yoshinori Kitase, and then the creative director Tetsuya uh, Nomura, and director Naoki Hamaguchi, and music supervisor uh keiji uh, kawamori so some 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 well known recognized names just with what they do 
um, the body of work that they've done across several games, uh, particularly with you know the Final Fantasy stuff and just in general the work they've done uh, with Sony in tandem. Can you explain what we're seeing of the combat system? Has it remained untouched since 7 Remake, or have you altered anything? I want to highlight the new synergy moves. Most for the best. Okay, so that is new. Where they're like throwing each other or doing combos and stuff. This new mechanic allows the player to use synergy commands and abilities freely at any time by using by using up a gauge charge in a similar manner to limit breaks okay so if you're unfamiliar with limit breaks right you you're fighting you're doing your combat and then you have this meter that's building up along the way and once it hits max you do like a special move essentially is the most basic way of explaining that but they're saying that you can do this at any point now just in a similar way so instead of like the limit break thing or whatever or on top of it then you can do this synergy move so through the battles players will feel the relationships and bonds they've developed between the characters even more so than in the previous game ah okay that's a that's a nice way to tie in and like bring in the immersion of the characters we've also added skill trees as a new element of character growth skill trees now I know in the in the OG one, right? Like you just as you level up, you get new things that you can do. Primarily with like your limit break. I think that was like the main goal because everything else is pretty much item based. Huh? Skill trees. You can unlock synergy abilities through the skill tree as well many new materia with new abilities not seen in the first one are available okay so they're bringing in materia so players will have even more options to customize and build character loadouts to their own taste so cool so they're definitely just doubling down on like the uniqueness of your gameplay like i was saying before uh with the other ones like my friend played his very different than the way uh, my younger brother played his the, than the way I played mine, right? So they're saying that they're just really wanting to highlight uh, your own narrative as you work out the overall narrative in the game. So that's cool. I always love when they do that. So it just feels unique. You can take ownership of, of the game. Like before, right? Like how you could run around with, uh, I think it was like the ribbon item. This is a very OP item. Um, but like I didn't do that so it changed a lot of the struggle <laughs> that I had to go through I think I like legitimately put hours into just messing with gold saucer stuff back in the day the original party members are all present and then we talked about how that leaves more questions than answers it's kind of vague but with the context here um it says that similarly as 13 was before where 13 showed up in the second half of remake but then becomes playable in rebirth there are characters who will be accompanying members in rebirth that will not become playable until the next one so that context kind of answers for us you know how that's going to work moving forward so i guess from that we should expect everyone to to appear but original party members at first i was like does that mean you know all of them from seven does that mean the ones from midgard or does that mean all the people that showed up and just rebirth right all right and then we we fast forwarded here <clears throat> And they were asking about summons, to which I was like, look, Odin is the reason you get a PS5, right? Like, remember Odin back in the day? This, he's sitting on the steed with, like, six legs, hops off the cliff, takes a swipe at all the enemies. They do, like, those three scenes from different angles and then bounces back off into the darkness. And if they're weak enough or weakened enough, it's a one-shot. Um... So I would love to see how that works in, in this visual fidelity, but they are saying here that the lineup of summons 
has been fleshed out in such a way uh, beyond uh, a remake. They have new extended side content that is based on a summon who did not appear in the original seven and even more besides. So we're getting a new summon. We're getting new content and it has to be pretty powerful. A summon who did not feature in the original Final Fantasy seven. So they're not talking about Knights of the Round or anything like that. They're talking about a brand new summon to the seven universe i'm for it like what in the world like the hype train is building up here okay it's filling up the basket they keep putting in you know to try to drive the sale of this game in the ps5 okay and then we went over this this is cloud here and how in the original one you are definitely like just a character in the back doing your ch -ch 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 -ch, like your gun stuff and then at the end you would do your special move and spin the buster sword and then put it on the back and try to build up your points i forgot the, what the reward was for doing that but so they're saying here that you're you're not only in this scene now but that you're leading it with cloud and you can change and customize the composition and, and how it plays out and how that works. Um, but they made the statement here and you let me know if you felt that way about it. But the celeb the celebration of Rufus or that inauguration as the new president of Shinra is the climax of the first half of the original game. And I'm trying to think if it like felt that way to me when I was playing before it, but it just it doesn't come off doesn't feel that way if that makes sense junon is a massive event in the game don't get me wrong uh there's some stuff to do outside the village i think there was like a new i think there was like a new material or summon or something like that that you would you would get around that area too uh regardless of whether it is or isn't like it's it's an awesome part of the game and i look forward to, to figuring this this part out and doing this this uh mini game stuff that we're talking about here because they are talking about in the interview uh hamaguchi does with the mini games but that they're going above and beyond the scale of mini games from even the original one which is wild to even think about because the original one has a lot of content in it like I said, you can easily spend, I spent like 20 hours in the Gold Saucer, just from those mini games. Um, and they had things tied to it. So you had materia, you had uh, items, you had weapons. There's a limit break, because I mentioned Omni Slash. Uh, you know, building up your, your, I think, credits or whatever it was in the Gold Saucer so that you could turn around and, and buy those and keep it moving. So, and here... It says many of these can be experienced in the main story, but we also have lots of unique games and challenges that appear as part of the side stories. There might be players who get so caught up in the fun mini games that they find they aren't making progress in the main story. Of, of course, that's all I was saying. I was like, you know, Shinra, Soldier, Genova, uh, Sephiroth, all that stuff be damned, okay? Just take, just take a, a break. Oh, you need to get to Cosmo Canyon? Just chill out, okay? Research takes time anyway. That guy's old. We're gonna get there. He's not in a hurry. We're gonna hang out in the Gold Saucer and do some mini games, okay? 20 hours. And then we'll get back to the story. <laughs> whatever, whatever everyone's doing, the reunion can just wait, right? We're going to go have some fun, take our minds off of the world ending for just a little bit, and then we'll get back to saving the world. <laughs> work, work life balance. Gold Saucer is another iconic locale that players will be eager to visit. 
have you approached redesigning the amusement park? Maguchi says, players will first visit the gold saucer in the middle section of the game, but are then free to come back to any of it at any time they like. That's how the uh, that's how the original works. In order to create that motivation to make them want to come back, we design the part. Yeah, okay, before I move on, you don't really have to do that. There's a lot that takes place in, in the gold saucer originally to where you would just want to come back anyway. There, there are things to get there. So that that part makes me wonder about its design because you're you're trying to get me to come back when originally you didn't have to do that. It was just kind of packed. Let me see. Whoops. We designed the park to provide a changing and ever more wonderful experience with each visit. So new mini games are added and harder difficulty modes are unlocked as the main story progresses, giving you even more to do there. There was an element to that in the original one, I believe, and I'm not talking about like all of the games necessarily, but in the entry to the gold saucer, what would happen is you would have like some NPCs at the front that you could talk to and sometimes interact with for like some kind of questions or, or uh, I forgot what the currency was, but yeah, you could do that stuff in the beginning. You could leave, come back later in the game. And those same NPCs aren't necessarily there anymore. They've been swapped out or they just aren't there. So they're, I think they're building on, if I remember that correctly, I think they're building on that and just saying, Hey, because it's a, like, it's an amusement park. It's a theme park. So it's going to have even more dynamism, right? It's even more dynamic each time you move in and out of it because it is, it's not a static place. It's not a static experience it's like if you if you went to six flags or like what's near me i'm in charlotte carowinds so if you go to carowinds right today and then you leave and then go you know tomorrow completely different experience so it is not just the mini games either and the parts of the gold saucer scene in the main story have also been fully remade and upgraded too, so you can expect great things from it. All right, awesome. The trailer also shows moments of the party exploring lush exterior open areas. How do those larger areas work within the context of gameplay and story? Hamaguchi says, once the team leaves Midgar, Cloud and the team's major objective Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is to follow and track down Sephiroth across the expanse of the world they find themselves in. Yes, that is exactly what you do. We've put a lot of emphasis on exploration focused game design with this title as we want to create that feeling of an ongoing, of going on a journey while traveling around the world in pursuit of evidence of Sephiroth's movement. So yeah, you, you, <sighs> A lot of the game ends up you catching up to what he's already done, right? He's obviously moving much faster than you are, and he's clandestine. So you're trying to see in what, like what ways, what clues can we get that he's actually been here? Like, is there something off or something wrong? Or do we have to, you know, fight something or is something dead or that sort of thing? Like to try to, you know, catch up on what he's doing but he's not running from you okay like that's not what's happening he's he's literally doing his own thing he's in his own world and you're just trying to catch up and and figure out what what's going on in that world of his in his head so <laughs> now you're several years into remaking iconic locations of seven and with a remake being so successful do you feel less pressure to match fan expectations when reimagining beloved areas and moments? And Hamaguchi says, as Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will take players to various locations across the whole world, we needed to recreate the massive seven world map that would also incorporate places such as towns and dungeons within itself. 
To do this, we dug deeply into the feeling of each different region and reflected that in the graphics, creating areas that look and feel quite diverse. And on top of that, we designed chocobos, unique to each region, that have their own abilities, like you know the mountains. The mountain chocobos can climb you know, the sheer cliffs, and the sky chickens can, well, you know, they fly. So players will need to utilize their chocobos to fully explore each area. I hope players have a lot of fun with this aspect of exploration. That's this. I like that they are in this one deciding to make. I guess certain the way they design the maps rely on the chocobos more. If they're saying like when you had your the color chickens before some of that activity is so late game that by the time you actually master using them you're in a you're in a completely different vehicle um and the speed at which you can traverse the map like they just can't compete with right and in particular with the Knights of the Realm Materia, the only reason you're going through all that trouble is because there's an area that your vehicle can't get you to to get that historic, awesome, mysterious Materia. You can only get there through, I believe, the Black Chocobo, right? So only the Black Chicken can get you there. <laughs> it's the, the, the space of the island is so small that it was, it's cool how they took that into account too. Your vehicle is larger pretty much than the island itself so you can't land on it you literally have to get on your black chicken go over the ocean because that's what that one did that that chicken had uh jesus walk and you can go over to the island and get off then do that that uh essentially what is a mini quest I don't, cause I don't, you don't have to, yeah, it's, it's a mini quest, like, Knights of the Round changes the game in a crazy way, but you don't have to get it, um, but yeah, so that's, it's based on, it's based on that, so I, I think I like the fact that there will be more interplay with blue chickens and green chickens and, and even the, the regular yellow chickens in this game, <laughs> But that's cool. So they're, they're going to try to force us more to move around here. And and to be sure, as he was saying, like the way that you traverse the original game, you're essentially like on a globe, right? And there are no cutoff points. Like if you fly to the north, you will hit like the North Pole in that game. And if you keep going, you'll have a, an expanse of ocean. And then you will start making your way to other areas. That's part of what made me fall in love with the game. Like, it was so connected. It wasn't just a load in, load out kind of cutscene kind of stuff. Like, now you're in this space. Now you're in this space. No, like, I can literally, from where I am, see Midgar. Or from where I am, I can see Wutai right i can uh see the the spire for the mini game where you're doing with like the phoenix the the, the condor stuff right so all of that stuff was connected when there was like a hole in the earth and suddenly you know the live stream is exposed that stuff was like on the world map if in in a playstation one title you know what i'm saying so I love that they're saying like, hey, we want to make these unique, but we want to recreate that massive map. So and, and I hope they stay true. I don't I don't I don't want necessarily to see zones. I really hope that they can dial in and just really pick up on the world. Right. Like you go if you hit Midgar, you see Midgar on the world map. But then, of course, it, it loads you into Midgar so that you can get to the various points of interest. Like, that's if they get back to that, I think that would be peak. It says Seven Remake offered new interpretations of classic locations and moments, as well as entirely new ones that enrich the game. Is there a similar balance for Rebirth? And Kitase says, Oh, let me scroll down and see here. That's the Chocobo. As with the previous game, 
we have strived for the right balance between old and new scenes but we also tried to take on more new challenges than we did with remake with some of the new scenes i'm confident these new scenes will be wholly enjoyable or wildly enjoyable excuse me for fans and newcomers alike what is the fun i love that you can just oh they, they even indicate here that you can actually run up here that's cool uh, hold your hand and let you know that you need to run up this side and uh what is the function of the world map world map is vast and expansive so not all the locations on it will be used in the main story alone in fact volume wise the amount of side content in seven rebirth is nearly double that of the main quest content thank you it encourages exploration players who want to enjoy seven setting on an even deeper level can explore all the corners of the world discovering many different exciting experiences such as new stories battles and mini games to play it will also be possible to return to any of the regions in the world even after the main quest moves on from that area so you don't have to worry about leaving things behind or unfinished that is that's massive uh, i believe in the, the original game there are there are little moments in areas that you can't go back to none of them are standing out right now like that but you you definitely needed to there was a sense of if i don't get this done now i'm not going to be able to get back in there um and make that happen so it'll be interesting to see it and in particular what they mean by that given this is a direct continuation of remake can players port over their save file and their character builds to continue the journey to rebirth we have announced that the seventh remake project will be a trilogy and that each entry will be a standalone game in its own right because of this each game's balancing is done independently and a player's levels and abilities will not carry over from one game to the next however we have created some special bonuses for fans who played the previous game allowing them to start with a little something extra um okay so th they are saying that the expectation from the beginning for for you should have always been the fact that no you're not porting anything over <laughs> you're not building upon what you did before so it's kind of that's interesting right because we're talking we're basing everything about the original game so in the original game it's all on discs right so when you move from one act to the next one it's not like what happens on the first disc is independent of the second disc and the third disc etc but in here if you create this massively op character in remake but none of that actually like your experience from that game doesn't translate over so they're really getting you to focus on i played this story so now let me play this one that alone makes the game and experience very different so i don't know i don't know how i feel about it of course because i haven't um, played it on there but it just i can see why people would be disappointed because it it may feel disjointed so i'm very curious as to what these special bonuses are that are a little something extra to i don't know make you feel the continuity between what you've done before what can you tell us about the soundtrack and music kawamori the world of seven rebirth is much larger than the remake and because of this the team created a variety of new music to go alongside that we've also expanded the variety of musical genres this time around so i think there will be plenty to enjoy i never thought about that before in the original game genres hmm. uh, of course we also have many rearrangements of classic tracks from the original one too so i hope fans will enjoy comparing both iterations of the same song to see what's changed for example the music in the newly released trailer is a rearrangement of seven's main theme as a battle music track i thought that sounded familiar and it gives you a taste of the direction the team has decided to take in the seven rebirth okay 
What was the concept behind the new trailer? Nomura says every trailer has a specific purpose. Since this is the second installment in the remake project, there are many people who've played the previous game or enthusiastic fans who follow the built in mysteries. But for newcomers or those who are simply interested in seven series, we want to include a full overview of what kind of experience they will have with this project. So there is less of a mysterious pretense to this story, to the story this time, but you can look forward to the next trailer. Okay. I was trying to make this one much more in inclusive, right? I'm trying to push those PS5 sales as well as the game. So yeah, and they're saying the next time they're gonna wow us with some, some intrigue. There was a scene with Cloud and Sephiroth fighting together, but will the player get to control Sephiroth? If you played the original one, I'm sure you can guess which scene I'm talking about. You will be able to control Sephiroth in the same scene in this title as you did in the original. Okay. Okay. So we'll save that one. So that is a, you're not going to go ham, but you will get to move the scene forward because of that level of control that was there in the original one. I'll leave it there. <laughs> if you really want to control Sephiroth, I suppose you need to go play Smash. Goat Saucer appears in the newly released trailer, but will players be able to enjoy the much anticipated date scene on the Ferris wheel also? Naturally, this is one of the major highlights of Gold Saucer, so it's included in the game. Please look forward to how it will appear in Rebirth with its high resolution visuals. Okay, Nomura, so he was like, I'll just give it to you straight. Remake showed the story up until the escape from Midgar, but what point does Seven Rebirth take us up to? We've mentioned this a few times before. He's like, listen. You will listen to me. Listen! But the order in which you can explore the location is not the same as the original seven. Order in which you explore the locations is not the same. And there are some shifts in the order. And there are some shifts in the order. For example, Wutai, one of the major locations, is not part of the route in Seven or Rebirth and will be visited in the next one although there are some changes in the order of the locations the locations depicted in this title extend up to the forgotten capital where the greatest fate of seven awaits you okay so we're getting up to the forgotten capital but that <laughs> no more does it it doesn't necessarily tell us this is what these are the events that we should anticipate because he's mentioning the forgotten capital right how are we getting there is still very much a mystery as they're retelling this story and that's what i was saying like for instance wutai you can get to early on relatively speaking in the game once you are free of midgar but like in this game they're saying it's not part of the route uh and you won't be able to get up in there until the next one and there they are there are reasons to be in Wutai, but they're just, they're pushing them back uh, for their own purposes. So one of my favorite fights is in there and won't get to do it <laughs> in this game or in the other one. So, you know, there's, there's that, there's the, the intrigue there. So who knows? That also means that they could shift, not just like the point at which you get to these places, but their locations might be vastly different if you compared them to where they sit in the world in the original one. I'm, I'm so hyped for this. Like everything, like when I, th when I think of RPGs, I don't think of JRPG. I don't think of any of those distinctions. When I think of an RPG, Final Fantasy VII comes to mind. Now, it may just be because it's the first one, but I, I really, really love the attention that they told with the story and all the characters 
and, and like just the topics that they touch on in this game they went well beyond you know those late 90s and you know i hope that they just continue to push uh this narrative forward again uh for a new audience and we get to relive it here so uh, if you want to see more of this if you would like to see me re uh, put up the content on here and actually play the remake let me know uh with a like on this video and we can make that happen i am so ready to play seven once again